um, Thursday contest, obviously coming off a bye, both teams, so so uh, extra preparation time for for each team. Uh, Washington State's a good football team. Um, they're uh, playing very well on D. Uh, in fact, number one in the conference, uh, points allowed, which is really the bottom line and the most Im important statistic defensively. Got some good players on defense. Uh, linebacker is exceptional, number one. I think he's second in the league in tackles. Um, Got a couple DNs that put pressure on the quarterback. Uh, secondary is talented, play hard. Um, offensively, very similar to the scheme we saw uh, against the Trojans 10 days ago, which I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing for us, but there's a lot of carryover. Um, it's uh, 10 and 11 personnel predominantly, uh, predominantly 11 personnel in <clears throat> control downs, and they jump into 10 on third downs, but, but uh, it'll be, uh, Test for our secondary. They're they're primarily a, a, a throw team. You know they're not getting a whole bunch done in the run game, uh, 80 or 90 yards a week. But they're they're getting uh, quite a bit of production throwing the football. So that's something that will be a challenge for our uh, secondary. Um, night game obviously is a Thursday nighter, and uh, should be uh, you know good contest for us. And we're going to have to play our best. There's. There's no doubt about it, and, and they, they do some really good things on tape. They've had some good wins this year at Wisconsin. is probably the, the uh, biggest win for them this year. Took care of Cal uh, pretty handily, and so that's where we're at. So, Justin, you got one for me to open up? Yeah, yeah Justin's question is, so that's the best game that I've seen since the TCU game at home many years ago. How can you build on that momentum going forward? Yeah, that was a good effort by our guys against uh, USC. Hung in there, continue to fight. Um, it was a great college game. I mean, anybody who was at that game or had a chance to watch it, I'm sure felt the same way. Um, real testament to our players and their, you know, just their competitive nature, how we hung in there. Offense did a great job keeping us in the game. That was really the key to the game is, is matching uh, the scores uh, that, that SC. Uh, was putting up on the board and keeping us within striking range, and then at the end, uh, being able to get that last play to to win it. And uh, yeah, we'd love to keep that momentum heading into this game and and uh, that confidence on offense, and and uh, hopefully we can, you know, build upon that. Good question. Kyle, you're coming off a bye, but it's not a full two weeks, right? It's a mm -hmm. short game. We're playing on Thursday. What right. has had to be tweaked in terms of scheduling and logistics to to fit all this in for Thursday? Well, first of all, we gave him a couple of days off after uh, after the uh, last game at home. Uh, we did come in on Monday and and uh, watch the film and and uh, put that game to to uh, to bed. But Tuesday and Wednesday we gave him off, and then we picked up on Thursday as if it was a Monday, and then just carried on through. Uh, gave him yesterday off, Sunday off, and so today is like a uh, Wednesday Thursday hybrid practice, I guess you could say. Uh, tomorrow will be like a Thursday, and then we're right on track for for a Wednesday, Thursday, the same as a Friday, Saturday routine, yeah. You said the run game was one of those areas you wanted to focus on this week. Where, where do you kind of see this moving forward now? Yeah, you know, focus on it. Um, I guess that's the right word. It's probably the word I use, but just more, more production. We're not uh, as productive in the run game this year as we have been in years past, but you know, on the other side of that, we're throwing the ball pretty darn good. And so as long as you're getting it done one way or the other, but but uh, we seem to be at our best when we're running the ball effectively, which opens up the the uh, play action pass game even more so than it uh, than it has been. You tell the receivers to be ready because it would stand that after that huge game, Kincaid would be the focus of a defense stopping it. You'd think, yeah, I know I would. If I was a, you know, a defensive coordinator, that would be a, a primary objective if you look at our tape, and particularly the last game, and saw what he was able to accomplish and, and do something to say, hey, if you're going to beat us, it's got to be some other way than the tight end catching 16 balls. So <coughs> we'll see what they have in mind. But uh, Dalton's a, you know, a real talented kid, and, and I don't know if you can completely take him out of the game, but, but I'm sure they'll try to slow him down. You said last week. Mm -hmm. Where you want to go with that? What, what have you sorted out? Yeah, we've got it sorted out. That'll be kept internally. You know, we're not going to tip our hand there, but we we feel like uh, we've got the the guys uh, for this week in the right pecking order and and uh, plugged into the game plan, maximizing their strengths. Along the offensive line, it, it seems like the groups come together uh, fairly well, but I have noticed 
uh, at the right guard. You've been switching in Jaron Cobb, Michael Mokofisi a little mm-hmm. bit. Is that a uh, situational thing, a personnel thing? Are they still fighting out for that spot? Or health thing, a health yeah. thing. We've got you know a little bit banged up, and and so uh, yeah, that was more due to that than well exclusively due to that. Yep. Last week you also talked about the defense, maybe simplifying things. Did did you change anything this week, or is it more just an emphasis to simplify and make it easier for them? Um. You know, a little bit of uh, streamlining, not a ton. We weren't doing, you know, all that much. It's not like it was overly complicated, but, but, uh, you know, and you look at the second half. We played much better in the second half than we did the first half uh, last week, and so uh, there's no, you know, panic or or uh, reason to have wholesale changes. But if we can play more like we did in the second half rather than the first, that that's the objective, and just guys uh, making plays and and playing with confidence and and playing hard. They always play hard, but but. Uh, just uh, settling in and, and making plays. I feel like this year, with, with the conference changing, how the, the teams get to the Pac-12 championship, I know you're a one-to-one game guy. You don't focus on anything else. But do you feel like that changes maybe your perspective on how you try to get there? I don't think so. You're just trying to win every week. That, that never changes, obviously, no matter what the configuration of the league. Uh, as I said before, it's, it's – uh, you know, I'm not a math major, but I would think having to be better than ten of the schools rather than five of the schools to get to the five other schools to get to the championship game would make it a little more difficult. But everyone's in the same boat. But uh, you know, the the champion is going to be crowned by who wins the game in Las Vegas, not whether you go in there as first or second. That I don't want to say it's irrelevant, but but really the the Pac-12 champ will be determined in Las Vegas, and so you just got to get yourself to that game. Kyle, back to a short game, you're getting less time with this game week, but can you view it as a benefit because you're getting essentially more time to look at next week? Yeah, I think this is the ideal scenario. If you have a buy to have it come on a Thursday, so you get extra couple three days, and then you got to get extra couple two days uh, the next week. And so I think that uh, sometimes you can get a little bit stale going the full two weeks. And so I think if you were to map it out and say this is exactly how we want it to play out, I don't think it could be any more uh, beneficial than it is, at least from a you know just the, the preparation and the, and the uh, the time sequencing. What do yeah. you make of the rest of the conference this week being on by? Do you keep an eye on them at all? When, when they're on a bye? No, like, are you keeping an eye on the rest of the conference? Uh, you know, from a distance. And we're worried about ourselves and, and taking care of our business. And we feel like if we're able to take care of our, our business, then everything will work itself out. So, so you do, I'm not going to say you just ignore everything. You don't have any clue as to where people are, but, but uh, it's not our main focus. Our main focus is, you know, us trying to keep pace. So that's where we're at. With the uh, awareness, it seems like it's under scrutiny with targeting and roughing the passer. Hmm. Calls are being made a lot more, it mm-hmm. seems anyway, maybe I'm wrong. Uh, do you teach your guys or tell you guys to maybe do things differently from, from years back to come by? Well, absolutely, but not just now. Ever since you know the targeting became a, a, a focal point and and roughing the passer has seemingly become more and more prevalent, more than target. I think targeting is pretty well leveled off, but but roughing the passer, I don't have the stats to back that up, just my own observation, but but definitely roughing the passer, and it's magnified I think because of what's going on in the NFL. Yeah. You know, it's 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 uh, it be, it's become more uh, at the forefront, and uh, we certainly try to coach our guys and educate them every chance we get as to how to operate when you're, you know, even when you're making the sack, you know, the, that strike zone that you got to stay in and, and then no, no, no uh, unnecessary late shoves or, or any of that stuff because it, it can cost you. I mean, it did cost us in the UCLA game. Kyle, we've talked a lot this season about dual threat quarterbacks. Mm-hmm. Um, where does Cam Ward kind of fit in in terms of what you've seen this season? He's very similar to what we saw against SC. I mean, he's got a big arm. He can uh, extend plays. Uh, he's hard to sack. He's not as hard to sack once you get a hold of him. He's not as, you know, the other guy was uh, like tackling an old lineman. But, but uh, this guy is uh, very, very similar and can get himself out of jams and uh, has done a nice job throwing the ball. Like I said, they're, uh, you know, close to 300 a game throwing, I believe, 280-ish, somewhere in there. What, what makes Pullman such a difficult environment to play in? Uh, you know, that's a good question, but but it is. I mean, the, the stadium can get loud. It's not the biggest stadium, but they got good support. Um, and just, uh, you know, I don't know. I couldn't tell you exactly why it makes it uh, difficult, but it has proven to be a, a tough place to play. Any other Boy, that was easy. 
Okay. Thanks. All right.